Because they died in the faith. God have not received the promise. Saw the fraud. Caressed and bleeding. And when Jesus got up from the grave, their faith was in him. So they got it with him. And then peered the folks into the city. Showed up in town. Shook them up. Oh, how I many of those a big shake up that day? Jesus not only got up, but a bunch of more folk got up with him. Hallelujah. And those we got up with him too. Dead and trespasses and sin. But we're made alive by the blood of Jesus. I said, dead and trespasses and in sin, but made alive through the blood of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said, made alive by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm thankful. I said, I'm thankful for the Lord today. You know, he didn't choose, we didn't choose him. He chose us. I'm glad he chose me. What about you? I said, I'm glad he chose me. Like that song, he didn't have to do it, but he did. But I'm glad he did. I'm glad he chose me. You know, ever since I can remember, he chose me. Before I was born, he chose me. I was three years old. I was three years old, I can remember back. God dealt with me. Praise God. All my life. All my life. Thank you, Jesus. I just wish I'd have surrendered earlier. And all my life, the same spirit I feel is just in a greater manner. As a child, I felt the same spirit of God. Drawing me to pray. Didn't know much how to pray, but I just prayed. Simple. You know what I saw? I prayed so so many men prayers that are just like that. Just a child like simple faith. Just believe God. Go ahead. Just pray and believe he, he, he would answer when I prayed. And he did. I said, and he did. Thank you, Jesus. Just ask God to see it come to pass. Right. But he would, he would, he would come on me, and I start crying. I would want the rest of the kids around to see me crying. They make fun of me, so I take off running. But he wouldn't leave me until I prayed it off of him. So I kept his hand on. I prayed it off of him. Amen. I'm not go to sleep. Mom would be looking for me. Or would you be? They look at me everywhere, climb up under the bed, climbing out the old smoke house. People had a kitchen off of the house. They climb up old clothes, ball up and weep, ball and weep. Pray. I couldn't help it. When something I chose, something he chose for me. I was too little to make that kind of choice. But he chose it for me. He chose never could get away from him. Glad I couldn't. And I'm glad he didn't let me go. Glad he didn't turn me loose. Tired to be normal. Never always in the back of my mind. Wanted no peace. I'm doing what I was trying to do. Ain't no peace to me, but what I'm doing today. Amen. That's my peace. Serving God. Working for God. Praying. I know this ain't my number one thing I like to do. It's preach. I'd rather pray. But you know, praying brings preaching. I'd rather spend time alone with God myself. That's not my number one desire. But you know, pray it. You just pray, pray, pray. It's going to burst out. You got to let it go. Somewhere. That river starts flowing. You got to let it flow. 
It's God's will for it to flow out to the people. Yeah. Feed the sheep. You know? yeah. Feed the sheep. Yeah. As long as I can remember. He dealt with me. Yeah. Dealt with me. Driving into the world to pray. Didn't let me go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I said he didn't let me go. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad he did. I'm sure many of you more, more of you could say that today, maybe in a different manner uh, compared to that. But somehow you knew God had his hand on you. you no matter where you went, what you did, it was in the back of your mind, that was that question. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? That was God holding on to you. Ain't you glad he didn't turn you loose? Amen. And the lot of them came up with you is gone today. God didn't hold on to them like they hung on to you. You, you think about God. Fine, but I don't question too much. I just thank you. And you'll mess with that. I wish you some help, but anyhow, he held on to me. Thank God. Hallelujah. Have mercy on me. Yes. Have mercy on you. Mm -hmm. When others is gone. That's right. When others are not here anymore. Came up. Went to school with them. Just gone. Went, went, went away in a lot of different ways. Quick, fast, evil. A lot of different ways. And I'm so glad. He has mercy on me. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we can take it for granted if we're not careful. Yeah. That God didn't have to do it. it. You know, it could have been somebody else up here instead of me. I could have been gone. It could have been somebody else sitting out there today instead of you. It could have been somebody you knew. It could have just as well have been somebody that you knew instead of you. And somehow God had mercy on me. And you're still around. You still got a chance to obey God. You get still got a chance to do God's work. God's made it possible for you today to be blessed. I know everything ain't perfect around us, but He is. The one we seek is perfect. Amen. Not even the air we breathe in is perfect anymore. Not even the water we drink is perfect anymore. But he is, and this is. And you know what? If you stay in this, he'll make everything. He'll take out, he'll take out the poisons in your water. He said, I'll bless your bread. I'll bless your water. I will sicknesses away from the vista. God can take an imperfect surrounding and make it good. And make it blessed. There's one thing about it. He blesses his children. He blesses his children. Just like you look out for yours. He looks out for his. More so. I said just like you look for out for your children. God looks out for his children.
he'll put a hedge about you. Put a fire around you. And a glory in your soul that you can step out and shine his lights. Hallelujah. You can step out in a world like we're living in and still survive and still overcome. Chosen. You know, the Bible says we're chosen before the foundation 
in Christ before the foundation of the world. Chosen in Him. In Him, we were chosen. Praise God. Gerald, the devil would like to distort you. Make you doubt. Make you doubt that God ever called you, ever chose you. And you're going through a trial. That's when He moves in on you. Try to hit your deadly blow. That's when you're going through a battle. He tries to move inside. Tries to strike you with a deadly blow. To put you on out. Thank you, Jesus. But you know what? As long as a person give himself to God and pray, there ain't a trial, there ain't a situation, he won't pull out. He'll pull out everyone. Every trial, every situation, you'll pull out of it. You pull out of it. Hallelujah. You'll come out. And you'll go on. God will build your faith back up again. It was like old Elijah. You know, thought about how did he just turned the whole nation. I mean, more he cleaned the house. I'm reading that. I mean, he cleaned the house. Him no. false prophets, he cleaned them out of his. Yes, sir. They all showed up. He had them right where he wanted. Come on, come on. He drawn them all up on Mount Carmel. Ah. Old bunch showed up to call fire down from heaven. He knew there wasn't no fire going to come down from heaven. From Baal. He knew that God was going to do it. I said he, he, he was just fooling them up there too. Took them up there. They, they done, done all this to Israel. They down there prophesying all this stuff to Israel. Had them all fallen Baal. I want you to know when God gets ready to line this thing up, see what all this is going on? All these false prophets out here teaching all this junk. That people's in a mess. Churches used to be on fire for God is in a mess. The most delusional spirits, the most spirits of strong delusion, drawing people. Seducing the people. Draw them out of here all this false religion. Israel was Israel. But what happened? Ahab went out. He married Jezebel. When Jezebel came back, she brought her gods with her. She brought her gods with her. And he didn't just bring her God. Ahab built her temples for her God. And it wasn't long before all of Israel had turned to bay. Yes, sir. All kinds of stuff. They had archers. They were burning babies on the altars. Go ahead. Burning the children. Offering them up in fire. I mean, you talk about a people coming from God to this kind of stuff. Yeah. Being deceived away from the truth. Out into this, just like going on now. You think, my God, some folks said among us is out here in this mess. You think, how could you walk away from the truth? How could you walk away from God's word and get the mess overnight like this? I mean, here's Israel, the prophet.
bastard. The coming of God's word ain't bastard. It's right. I said it's right. Somebody's got to do it. If I don't want to do it, God will raise somebody else to do it. I hope you do it along with me. I hope you cry out along with me that it's still in your right. I don't care how much they have in Jezebel. Says it's right. It's still in your right to wash your bell. It's still in your right. And I mean, God had to really do something to convince Israel. Look, you got up on the wrong leg here. You got away from God. You got away from the God of Israel. You got away from the God that brought you to the Red Sea. That shined the fire by night and the cloud by day. You got away from that glory. You got away from that word. I'll tell you one thing. You mark this down. God freaking set it back in order. God's going to put his kingdom back in order. God is getting ready to put Israel, which is the church, back in order. Figure set things in order. And the Israel, God's people, here it is, they have born been the king, uh, the leader of God's people, the king of God's people. See, God told them back in the first place. They got to in this mess because they didn't listen to God. The people went to Samuel and said, look, we want a king like everybody else. God said, no, you don't need a king like everybody else. You don't know what it's going to do to you. You don't know what it's going to take you. God never did intend for his people to be like the world. God wanted us to worship him and to fear him. Hallelujah, not worship false religion. They said, give us a king. Yeah. Sammy, we want a king like the rest of the world. All they were looking at was the Jesus. chariots, gold chariots, the gold crown on his head. Flesh. A bunch of flesh. You know what people are looking through now? Entertainment. Dance team. Hip hop and line dancing. Sweetheart dancing in the church. Two stepping. Drinking along with. Brother left us. You can see the pulpit. With a drink in his hand. Two stepping with his wife. Let me tell you, there's some evil deceiving spirits out there. Take you out. I said they'll take you out. See, the thing about it is, they're seductive. Them spirits are very powerful. They're evil. If you ain't praying, they'll seduce you. See, that's what he did in Revelations 2 and 18. Jesus, see, Jezebel was killed. The eunuchs throw, throw, throw her out of the upper chamber in the book of Kings. Yeah. And the dogs eat her. But here over here in the, in, in the book of Revelations, Jesus dealt with Jezebel again. You know why? Because her spirit is here. Her spirit, the spirit of Jezebel is still alive. Yeah. Oh, I said the spirit of Jezebel is still alive. People are doing everything they're big enough to do in church. No fear. You see, no wholeness is still right. Wholeness is still right. I may sound like a lone wolf over in the desert, but I want you to know wholeness is still right. Hebrews 12 and 14 is still in the Bible. For the peace of all men and holy no man shall see the Lord. The thing about it, when you really get it, it changes you. Your desire changes. You don't desire that kind of stuff. You don't desire. You desire.
uncleanness. You desire to be close to God. And the closer you get to God, the more you feel his cleanness. It'll clean you up. Hypocrites out here, run their mouth. But in my vision, I can 
see my mountain. I can see the mountain that Moses told me I could have.
took it away from the old traditional name. Or right. using right. live this and live that. But all the while, as they changed the name, they died. They got away from life. They got away from the truth. They got away from the real Holy Ghost. They got away from prayer and fasting. They got away. Now the gates open and everything out of hell is moving in. I mean, they're actually having purity brought down dances like the world had in church. It's total. They ain't holding nothing back. They ain't trying to skim it down. They used to try to skim it down a little bit, you know. They ain't skimming down. They turn the loose. Oh, yeah. Spirit of deception. So that's what happened. How could you move away from the part of Elijah? How could you move away from the part of Abraham? And now you're over here following this Jezebel woman with her false god burning babies on the altar, having these sex orgies. How could you get away from truth? How could you get away with a man with the word of God in his mouth and just walk away and you cut up high hair with bell worship? The same thing is going on today. That old spirit of Baal, that old Jezebel spirit is alive and well. That's why Jesus dealt with her in Revelation 2. He called it the depths of Satan. There's nothing more wickeder than a man in the pulpit preaching a false doctrine. There's nothing as wicked. Well, the Bible called it the death. What she was doing. Said, you have suffered that woman. I've got someone against you. You suffered that woman, Jezebel. To teach. And worship a fire. And to seduce my servants. To commit fornication. Her fornication was a false religion. He said, I'll cast her to a bed. That's what God did. He cast Jezebel to a bed. And every preacher has jumped the bed just about with Jezebel. And Jezebel has seduced them. And now they're bringing forth her seed. Her folks are not it. Been blinded by that force. So that's what happened. How could Israel move away from the God of truth and love and mercy? And now they're over here with Baal, offering their babies and burning them on the altar, having sex orgies. So there ain't no limit to where these spirits are going to take them to. In fact, it's going to take them into homosexuality. Since that law passed, I said 168 pastors have come out and told their congregation they were gay. There ain't no big thing about it now. Well, it's like America is embarrassed to say anything about seeing it. Like the preachers get red in their face. Change color. You start placing the sin. Crying aloud and sparing not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. That's a fight, folks. I mean, this spirit is bulldozing people, taking whole churches, coming right on in. I said, coming right on in. Take it over. They started out in that car. I told him, I said, I'm not deaf. Talk to me. You're not the most to me. But you know, I told you, I said, they won't stop here. I said, that's just the open door to get in the doors. I said, before it's over, they'll be doing every other dance there is. And now they're doing the fresh, the new dances. Everything. And all of me is... Go down. Sorry. 
It's all about evil. Yes, sir. Ain't nothing righteous about the devil. Ain't no truth in the devil. He's a liar and a father of all lies. Ain't nothing right about him. He's all wrong. I said he's all wrong. But how do you move from America that once had the A.A. Allens and the Jack Cole and the William Brown and over 200 preachers the voice of healing that was shaking this nation and around the world. Amen. More outside than big tents than it was inside. Amen. How do we move from this yeah. to their children, Amen. children that stood with Brother Branham and Brother Allen and yeah. shouted and saw yeah. the miracles that God used and how do we move from this to where we are today? Yeah. How do we move from the real move of God hip hopping and blind dancing and sweetheart dancing in the church. Yes, sir. Drinking. Yeah. Mm. Drinking and you see the pulpit. I'll tell you how you move. Name of one way you can leave that fear. Uh-huh. Is a strong delusion be given to you. Yeah. Because you somehow you didn't love the truth. You didn't love the truth more than everything else. You didn't love the truth more than that other thing. You didn't love the truth more than that. You didn't love the truth more than that. And God turned you over to that. And that took you the other way. You didn't love the truth more than you loved that woman or love that man. But when you got that man, got that woman, that took you to hell. They took you off the deep end. Yes, and you got to love the truth more than what your flesh wants. You got to have. You got to draw a line in the sand. So I can't cross that now. Come to Jesus. Come to the truth. Come with the blood. You just go. If you can't come over here with me and Jesus, bye bye. You can't step across that line that God draw. You can't step across that line and say, well, maybe I can win her. No, she's pulling you away all the while. He's pulling you away from God all the while. And when you look up, you're going to be so deep in hell and a mess to you, you don't, you don't even know your way back. You're lost. You don't know the way back.
He sold his right. See, he sold his birthrights. He wasn't thinking about me then. Uh -huh. Right now, I just gotta help me something deep, man. I don't know about these old birthrights. He'll take my birth certificate. See, your birthrights then was like salvation now. Like Jesus, like the blood. Then the elder son got everything. See, birthrights. It was handed down from the father to the elder son. That was called a birthright. Our birthright is through Jesus now. Our birthright is through the blood. And you sell that out, there ain't no hope. You sell the blood of Jesus out, there ain't no hope for you. And he sold his birthright. Right now, I just need something. And you got to think ahead of time. You just can't think about today. This thing is eternal. So he sold his birthright. Probably didn't even think of it no more until he got down. He would have, supposed to have received inheritance. But he didn't. And then he come back to his mind, oh God, I sold my birthright. And he started weeping. And he started crying. But the Bible said he found no repentance. Though he sought it carefully. Tears. Oh God, you have the truth. Be like Solomon, buy it and sell it now. No, no. There's some evil spirits in here. You can't just let your guard down and associate and fellowship with this mess out here going on. This is like witchcraft. It'll soak you under. And it is witchcraft. The sin of rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. It'll snatch you in and convince your mind you'll be headed that way and don't even know how you're going. You can't give the devil not just an inch. You gotta stay with the truth. You gotta stay with the Bible. You see how quick it can happen. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. You see how quick it can happen. Right among us, the things we warned about so much took place right among us. So easy, it seems like. So smooth and so right to the people that's happening to them. But to those that's praying, you can see the devil. You can spot the enemy, what he's trying to do to a creature or to someone. Because they won't listen. That's the thing about it. Once that seed is planted there, you can holler and scream and beg and plead, and they still won't listen to you. Walk right on the way. Seal the doom. And this is the time you seal your doom. See, you'd be delivered over. How can you move from the pure word of God and the next time you pop up, you dance with a drink in your hand in the house of God and see the poor people? Some of them passed over and the person can do that. Some of them, some of them flipped out. Something happened that they probably never will get back. Got to be a strong solution. Reprobate. We're not just living in any time, folks. It's a dangerous time. What the Bible said, we're living in dangerous time. I mean, you, you just do it in the name of visiting the church. In the name of girlfriend is getting a wife or getting a husband. Just flat. You go. That's how these evil spirits are now. Better stay away from them. And you get in there and ain't preaching the truth. You don't feel right. Get out. Get out quick. Run out. Don't walk out. Back out. Oh, Jesus, 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 keep my heart. Jesus, keep my mind. Jesus, keep my spirit. I know we don't have to fear the devil, but when you're in the devil's crowd, you got to get away. I was said we're living in perilous times. That means dangerous times. Dangerous times. Trouble time. 
Now, how do you move from the word of God from Elijah's mouth to over here to Baal? How do you move from the real? The transaction is so, the devil have it so smooth that you won't even recognize it. He'll close your eyes and you get a little sleepy eye. When you wake up, you're in a new world. You like it. You like this world. You don't even know that world anymore. Truth and love and mercy. Ain't that awful? Ain't that awful not to know the love of God? Ain't that awful to, to, to be trans, so smoothly transform, trans, laid it into this? And when your eyes is open, you don't know that life anymore. Try to know it and can't. You know why? Because it's so precious that God will take it from you. If you don't honor it. If you don't honor Jesus, honor the Holy Ghost, it's so precious. And it costs some. Folks, salvation costs some. It costs a man's life. It costs his last drop of blood and his last breath. It costs a great price. Oh, God, help us. Help us to stay on our face, stay on our knees, stay in touch with God, with the truth, and read that Bible. And say, God, let me love this word more than I ever loved it. Lord, I don't care how straight it is. Let me line up with you. Nail my feet to the floor with spike nails. Nail my hands to the wall. Be by the truth. Hallelujah. 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 How do you move from that now? All of Israel went to bear worship. But you know, I, I like the way God does things and shows you at the end of the story. That ain't all the story. They only worship in Baal, having set fortunes and, 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 and falling their babies on the altar. But how many of God had a man? He could speak to yeah. bring a change. Yeah. It may be some rough stuff sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes God has to shake up some things. Yeah. But he can bring a change. Yeah. God can bring a change. I'm telling you, this thing ain't over. It ain't over till it's over. And it ain't over yet. God's still on the throne. And there's going to be a church without spot. You better believe there's going to be a church. He's going to present to himself a church, not just a church, but a glorious church. Full of glory, power, dressed in white, clean and pure, sanctified and holy. Y'all be your rocker in this day and time preaching like that. No, I ain't off my rocket. I love bunches off the rock. I'm telling the truth. I can see it now. I said it told him Elijah said, Go and tell Ahab. Ain't going to rain. Well, there ain't no dew going to fall until I say so. To God. He and his And it wasn't so bad the first month or so. Year passed. Two years passed. Things drying up now. There ain't been no rain nor dew. Three years. God's going to get somebody's attention is what it is. God's going God to make him look Elijah's way. He's here, but he's going to tell him to come out of hiding. And when he comes out of hiding, they're going to be blaming him. You know, they just blame him because that's all they know to do. They blamed him for the drought. Elijah's just a mailman. He delivered and done. You made the bill. Not the mailman. 
You borrowed the money, the mailman didn't borrow. And you should get the man at the mailman. I'm just like a mailman. Elijah was just a mailman. He just brought the mail to Israel. Oh, Israel. Oh, Ahab. I brought you some mail. You don't miss let it read, son. Special delivery. There ain't no rain or no dew going to fall until I say so. Oh, he didn't like it. But he didn't very well care whether you liked it or not. It was a message from God. It was time for change. Something had to happen. Israel was going to hell. And God had to do something. And those Americans going to hell today. God got to do something. And God going to do something. And God is doing something. Doing something today among us. It may look like, like, like it's spreading, but God's got other folks out there. It is spreading. God's getting his word around. I said God's getting his word around. Yeah. We'll raise up others. They're going to get it around. Yeah. We're going to get the job done. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I said hallelujah. God lets the devil go so far and then he steps up and says that's enough. Back off. Back off. He let him do everything but kill Job. And he stepped up and said, that's enough. That would get away from Job. He turned around and blessed him for twice. A double portion. It looked like there wasn't going to be nothing left of Job when the devil got through with him. You see, God done told him, you, can, you can't touch his life. You can do what you want, don't you touch his life. Can't kill him. He done everything but kill him. Come on. He couldn't kill him because God told him not to. Amen. Job's faithfulness to God changed things. Amen. I said Job's faithfulness. Job's faith. That when, 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 when he could have told his hands up and said, man, I don't know what's going on. God's against me. I might as well quit. Him has ever felt like that. Amen. Just me. Yeah. And it felt like, look, God, if you're going to be against me, then you just be trying to. Man, I bet I don't need the tent and the new tires blowing boom, back. Preach it. I'd be thinking, God, look, well, if you're against me, then go on. Lord, if you're against me, then you just be trying. Amen. Amen. He wasn't against me. He was just trying to. Testing my faith. Trying my faith. Glory to God. He did everything but kill Job. And Job couldn't many times just say, hey, look, I'm through with this. But he didn't. He said, I know my Redeemer lives. And I'm waiting on my change. I know my change is coming. He said, in my flesh, I'm going to see God. I ain't going to die till God visits me. I ain't going to leave here until God visits me. In my flesh, I'm going to see God. Lord. He said, I ain't just looking for it when I die. I know I'm going to see him when I die. He said, I'm going to see him right here. God ain't going to let me go out like this. God ain't going to let the devil win over me like this. I'm coming out of this. I'm going to rise out of dust. I'm going to rise out of ashes. I know I've been in the fire. And I'm burnt like but I'm going to rise out of ashes and I'm going to give God the glory. Oh, hallelujah. Turn. I'm waiting on my chain. You got over there. Now three years and six months told Elijah, go show you, he said. Yeah. That time he had Obadiah. And the Bible said, Obadiah greatly feared the Lord. Okay. 
They have had them out looking for some grass and water. They run into a lodge. Oh, Elijah's here. He said, go tell Ahab. Elijah's here. He'd been looking for it. He knew where the drought come from. He knew that the word of God was in his mouth. He knew God was getting somebody's attention. He knew God was moving. I'm telling you, when God gets ready, he can get people's attention. He said, you'll take me. God will take you. If I go over and tell him, God will take you up on some mountain. He'll kill me. He said, don't go tell him. Behold, Elijah's here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Go tell him Elijah's here. Yeah. Come on. The time determined, here come Ahab. Ahab said, oh, the one that's troubling Israel. You were our trouble, Lord. You tried this stuff. He said, I ain't the one that's troubling Israel. This is you and your household. That false worship you got, yeah. that bell, that woman you got brought, you built a tent. See, that's where the trouble is. Yeah. Told you, come up to Mount Carmel. But said, don't bring no fire. Let the God that be God, let him answer by fire. Come up and let's see who God is. If bell be God, we'll worship him. But if God be God, let us worship him. A showdown. A showdown. It's time for a showdown. Hallelujah. I said it's time for a showdown. Go away. They went up there and they built an altar and put the sacrifice on it. Started leaping and jumping and prophesying, doing everything they could do to get. Bell the answer with fire burn up that sacrifice. But there wasn't no fire, there wasn't even no smoke. Nothing happened. Elijah sat back making fun of God. Maybe he's going on a journey. Call out. At the time of the evening sacrifice. That was a time of sacred time. Elijah moved him out of the way. My time now. And he tore down the altars of Baal. Yes, sir. And those, this mess has got to be torn down. Yeah. I said, all this mess that the enemy has built up has got to be torn down. Yeah. You know what he did? He rebuilt the altars of the Lord. He rebuilt the altars of God. He put up the bull up and put on it. He said, bring the four barrels of water. You want to make it good. I mean, he went and next, got that four and run that water. He said, bring me four more. Pour it, just wash it, everything there. Wet and everything. He said, bring me four more. Twelve barrels of water. Everything just wet. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you want to do that? Just go that extra mile. Sure. Let you know this fire can't be put out by yes, water. We can burn water and lick up water like it can. Like, yes. He got out there. There's all sitting back waiting to see. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody brought fire. So nobody could fake it. Heaven knows there ain't no matches. You can't fake it now. You gotta have the real one. Nobody ain't got no fire. You can't fake it. You got to have the real fire. They, they couldn't get no fire. Now Elijah went out there and did all this, prepared it with his hands of God. Show these people that our God, I've done all this. That's your word. Down fell the fire. Burned the sacrifice. Licked up the dust with the water. All the people when they saw that fire fail, brother, you better believe it made a believer. They got renewed in the Holy Ghost real quick. They got renewed real quick. They all fell on their face and said, the Lord, he's God. 
God, not them. Not this mess that we've been deceived with, but said the Lord, he's God. They fell on the face and recognized that the Lord, he's God. All 850 of them false prophets, 400. They have 450 from the prophets of the Grove's homosexual. Said at Jezebel's table, she fed them. She fed them homosexuals and they prophesied what she told them to. Just like today. These organizations are feeding them. Preachers and they're prophesying what they want to hear. They're preaching what they want to hear. I said, because they're getting it. They're preaching what they want to hear. They're fat in their pockets. They're getting something out of it. Yes, sir. Ain't about getting something out of it. It's about souls. I said it's about souls. Holy made 150 false prophets cut out. They knew their days was known. Elijah just didn't come to turn it back to God. He come to get rid of the devil too. They went to running for the life. Elijah said, cut him off. Don't let him go. Tim them down and wait on me. Tim them up. Wait on me, I'll be there. I mean, he cleaned the house. He not only turned the nation back to God, but he took his sword, which is the word of God, and he whittled them. He whittled all 850 of them false prophets to pieces. Let me tell you, the word of God is a sword. I said the word of God is a sword. It's going to cut these false prophets. It's going to whittle them down. They're not going to be able to stand before the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're not going to be able to stand before the true living God. The word of God is going to whittle them down. Stand on your feet. Let's go. Yes, Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I feel a showdown. God's getting ready for a showdown. I said, Elijah went up on that mountain for a showdown. He didn't go up there to come down like he was. He didn't go up there to bring Israel back like she was. He went up there for a change. And he went up there to get rid of the devil. He went up there to get rid of the 850 false prophets that was destroying God's people. He riddled them apart. Yeah. Cut them to pieces. Cut them to pieces. With a sword. And on this word, it'll cut you. It'll cut the false prophets. They can't stand the truth. They can't stand for you to cry loud and spare not. They can't stand for you to preach the truth. They're listening. They, they, they're listening. They know. They know who you are. They know where you are. Oh, yes. They knew what Elijah was doing. They knew. He was God's mouthpiece. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands up in praise. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Glory to God. Bless His holy name. Bless His holy name. Bless His holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Oh, it's time for a showdown. The devil's getting too bold. I said he's getting too bold. He's getting too bold. It's time for a showdown. Paul's going to stand up. I believe it. I just want to be ready. I just want to be with him. I want to be at his feet. Oh, I want to be in a place that he can use me. Don't you? I mean, he wants to be in a place. God tells you to go, you can go. Amen. Tells you, send you, you can go. You're ready to go. I mean, your man's mind has to be ready. You, you have to be ready. And God never tell you to do anything. He has to send you to Africa. He has to send you to India. You just got to have your mind ready. When God speaks, you're ready. You got to prepare. You got to prepare your mind. You got to prepare your heart. You got to prepare. We're going to be servants of God. We got to get ready. Because we're moving into a time. God's going to start speaking to folks. God's going to start sending people. And it's going to make a difference. 
I said, it's gonna make, when you get there, you're going to have something to give them. When you get there, you're going to have a word from God. When you get there, God, anytime time God sent somebody, when that person gets to where God sent them, then God ain't going to leave them empty. They'll have a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. God can change things. God can shake things up. Oh, I feel a shake up. I feel a shake up. on this. He called him up and said, don't bring no fire. He put God on a limb. God, we should show these folks who's real. God, we better show these folks who's God. And folks don't even know what's real anymore. And it's such a mess. He don't even know. But God is fixing to show himself one more time through signs and wonders and miracles. He's going to show his power. He's going to show who he, he's with. That's why the disciples were different. They had power to heal the sick. They had power to raise the dead. It made people take note. They said, we know these men are ignorant and unlearned, but they took note they've been with Jesus. Something about the, something about them. They're different. I said, something about God's people, they're different. Because Jesus done commissioned us and said, go to all the world. Amen. Behold, I give them your power. Tread on serpents and scorpions. For all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall be able to hurt you or harm you. You're gonna, just going to step out and begin to exercise your faith. Step out and begin to use what God put in you. Begin to take this word and speak it. Begin to take this word and step out on it and believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what Elijah said. Let the God that be God. Let him answer by fire. Don't bring no fire. Don't nobody bring no fire on this mountain. Let the true God, the real God, bring the fire. And he did. And you know what? There was a result. All of Israel turned back to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And the false prophets was whittled up. And Israel got a new start. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Oh, lift your hands and say, God, give us a fresh start. Give us a new start. Give us a Holy Ghost start. Give us a new start in the man. I believe he is. I said, give us a new start in the man. I believe he is. Oh, it may not be the way we want it, but I believe he is. And I want what he wants. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with what God does. I'm satisfied with the way Jesus does things. Hallelujah. Oh, lift your hands and praise. Lift your hands and praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And God don't move according to what we think. He knows more than we do. I said, God don't move according to what we think. He knows more than we do. But you know what? He didn't put it. He didn't put it in our hearts. His will. He put it in our hearts to do His will. Heaven wants to do his will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, I want to do your will. Lord, I want to do your will. I want what you want. Lord, I want what you want. I want you to answer the fire. God, I want you to show yourself. Show yourself, my name. God, we know you, God, but the world's done lost that perspective. Lord, the world's done lost sight. Restore, Lord. Bring revival. Turn the Israel back to God. Turn America back to God. Turn this nation back to God. Turn America back, Lord. 
reverse these old homosexual laws. Reverse these laws. Like you reversed them where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel. He reversed them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's gather around these altars. Let's pray today. Let's submit ourselves to God. Let's give ourselves to Him. Oh, let's tell Him, Lord, won't you to use me? Use me, Jesus. Lord, I want to make, make my heart. I want to get ready. I want to empty out. I want to empty out. I want to prepare myself. Oh, Jesus. You move. I want to move with you.
God, help us to pray that our children, our grandchildren will escape them. We keep our families in our homes. Lord, our wives and husbands and children and grandchildren came forward. Lord, as you pull them out, Lord, and I know the world's pulling on our children and grandchildren. All these old evil spirits are putting on them, Lord. But you said pray always that you might be counted worthy to escape. God, I want to be counted worthy to escape, Lord. These evils. Keep us, Lord. Keep us, Lord. Hallelujah. Keep us, Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Jesus. Stand up in the midst of us. Let your word, your spirit. Stand up in the midst of us. Make us a shining and a burning light. Let your glory be seen in us and upon us. Let us be lights of the world. City set on a hill. Cannot be hid or salt of the earth. Oh, Jesus. You're the answer, Lord. You're the answer, Jesus. We give it to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, heaven knows he's the answer. I said he's the answer. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. The answer. 